Hey guys, Dave from Days Glory Shopworks here and on this episode we are working at putting brake lines on the Fargo. So we're not going to go through the whole deal with it but we're going to touch on a couple of key areas. Right now Natalie is cleaning up uh, the distribution block and reusing some of the fittings from it. They're uh, slightly larger especially fittings for the 316th line and it's just going to be easier for us to reuse them. They're all in pretty good shape so we're pretty happy there. Save a couple bucks and I'm running the rear brake line right now but one thing you guys don't generally get to see is flaring brake line the easy way the good way the the, the fun way for me um, I have flared brake line for years and I've done it with the old kits and tools and the little dies and everything that everybody can buy at any of the, any of the parts stores and some of them work most of them leave a little deformity on the fitting and I, I never like that like on, on the on the end that you crush, crush in so uh, what I use is this kit it happens to be from Mako tools but there's a ton of suppliers that sell them and I'm gonna run you through how I like to do my brake line now the reason why I like to make my own uh, fitting ends is because I like using hard line I like using <coughs> the steel line with the anti-corrosion coating on it I'm not a huge fan of the soft line that uh, lots of guys use. Yes, it's quick, it's easy, it flares like butter, but you have to make sure it's secure and isolated from anywhere as it rubs or it's going to chafe through. At least that's the general idea of it. And I don't need to be thinking about that while I'm bombing down the road. So, uh, yeah, hard proper brake line. So I'm going to give you a quick run through of using this tool and it's pretty basic. The only other thing I like to add on is it's always great to have a good reamer. So sit back and relax. We'll run a quick uh, how I do it and hope you guys enjoy. So this is the kit. What it entails is a hydraulic ram press, different dies for different applications. You can do double flare or sorry bubble flare you can do regular old double flare you can do uh, GM fuel line for quick connects um, you can also do power steering line this is, this is for push on quick connects as well and there's even a couple more that uh, like trans cooler lines for GM applications and such I've made fuel lines for uh, a hot, for a fuel injection system I ran on my dart years ago and made them just clip right in together it was beautiful uh, with a kit like this so anyway uh, it's not super cheap though you got to be kind of dedicated to know you're going to be building brake systems and fuel lines and stuff year after year after year to, to bother getting it or be working it's part of your job like as a journeyman mechanic I bought this kit so I could use it while I'm repairing customer vehicles and such and just to do it faster and with a more confident flare so and yes, I, I can flare very well with the other older styles of units, but this thing, I really enjoy it. So, the only other thing I like to add to that is, yeah, the good reamer. I wish it came in the kit. They do always have some form of a reamer somewhere. Not in this kit, but most uh, brake line cutters have it, you know, tubing cutters. There's a reamer of some kind. I like this guy. It does a really nice edge for me, and... I have yet to have a problem or complain about it. So here we go. All right, you got your line. It's got a fresh cut on it. Take your reamer. And that's it. Just keep push and twist, push and twist. And it makes a nice, decent hole. Now you check that hole with your flaring die and this goes for the other kits as well there fits in good and solid we're happy so you take your 3 16 basically your line clamps I hope you guys can see this throw your clamps in place And bear with me while I get my fitting. All right, rule number one, never forget your fitting, which I literally almost did in the sake of doing this tutorial. 
Fitting first, always. Make sure it's orientated the right way, of course. Uh, I've done both. I've put them on backwards, and I've forgotten to put them on completely until after the flare happens. All right. Slide your line in and tighten this up. You don't got to go super snug yet because you can see now the line is protruding through. Oops. And we don't want it protruding through. So we got this little guide plate here. And this guy goes on and it pushes against the line. And you just work it back until the line is flush. Hope you can see the line is now flush in there. So now with everything pushed back, and secure. You give it a good tighten. And there you can see a better picture of the line in there. Maybe it was the flashlight even. See? Okay. After the line is in the right position, screw out the ram. Take your 3 16 die, drop it in. And I like to screw the ram in just until the die pops inside and I know it's centered up. From there, it's as easy as tighten the valve and just pump it. As soon as it starts to tighten up a little bit, you stop. You don't got to over crush it because you can over crush. There are, everyone's got their own little quirks. You just don't want to over crush it. Release the ram, it retracts. Unscrew it far enough to get the die out. And now, you can see, we got a nice bubble there. Looks nice and clean and crisp and pretty nice shape. Next step, just like doing it with the hand tools, you've got your cone. Put your cone in. The same thing, I wind it in until the cone is touching inside the tube and it's basically centered up, right like so. I hope you guys can see it, but there the cone is engaged in the end of the fitting. And same thing, tighten our valve and you just pump her in. Probably two or three light pumps, nothing crazy, and you run her back out. Once the uh, cone is clear, pull him out, and then you can loosen off your clamp. And there we have it. One nice form fit looking good and almost zero chance of leaks piece and that's it good hardened line this stuff will last the life of the truck so yeah so that's it in a nutshell guys short and sweet and i uh, hope you got something out of it like i said not everybody's gonna buy this tool or require the usage of this tool all the time Lots of guys can just buy the pre-made lines for the price of them. Uh, my big thing is I, I don't like unions. Every union in a brake line is a spot for a leak um, or some other potential little issue. Maybe I overthink it, but I like smooth, continuous, one-piece lines for with two fittings, one at each end of the component you're joining. That's how my brain likes it, so that's how I do it. All right. Everybody have yourselves a good night. We're going to continue putting the brake lines together on the Pargo, and we'll give you a, a show of it uh, on the next video. Hopefully we're bleeding brakes at that point in time. Have a good night.